Tonight on Tuning Out the News is special coverage of the 2022 midterm election. In a shocking twist, voters decide the future of democracy is more important than slightly cheaper eggs. CBS News' Weijia Chang joins us. Plus, Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna on how Democrats are adjusting priorities now that Lauren Boebert can't force them to recite the QAnon pledge every morning. And Austin Sparks hosts a roundtable featuring pro-life men debating whether a fetus is alive while using a fetus's level of brain activity. Here with analysis is conservative hot take host who's had his arms reattached six times due to chainsaw juggling mishaps, Tyler Templeton. Democratic strategist who only uses the word genius to describe Pete Buttigieg's barber, Lydia Parker. Princeton in history professor highlighting 300 pages of unbound paper on the subway, Dr. Ike Bloom. Chief field correspondent singularly holding up the dinosaur-shaped chicken nugget industry, James Smartwood Jr. And at the big board, senior political analyst currently realizing this life doesn't make him happy, Ted Jaworski. Our Tuning Out special coverage begins right now. From Comedy Central, this is Tuning Out the News Election 2022. Someone give Beto a Netflix deal already. I'm co-anchor who gets off on ordering highly rated sweat wicking cycling apparel, James Smartwood. And I'm co-anchor who thinks the midterms are my Super Bowl, but I also love sports, Kylie Weaver. Well, tonight Democrats are gleeful as the red wave turned out to be as strong as the flow of oxygen to Herschel Walker's brain. Republicans are leading the battle for the House, but the Senate remains in the balance as the nation considers whether the imagined fears of suburban moms outweigh the real fears of being forced to be a mom. In emboldened, President Biden held a press conference conference to take credit for helping Democratic candidates by never coming within 50 miles of their campaign events. Let's bring in CBS News' senior White House correspondent and tuning out contributor, Weijia Jang. Thanks for joining us, Weijia. Great to be with you, Kylie, and hello to everybody. Hello. Weijia, what was the key to the Biden administration turning in such an unexpectedly strong performance? Was it a mistake for Republicans to nominate one candidate for each disorder in the DSM-5? Uh, the White House has said from the very beginning that this is not a referendum on President Biden. They've been trying to really paint a picture of what would happen if Republicans took control. And to your point, this is now a divided Congress. And it's not only about not being able to achieve the rest of the items on the president's agenda, but really protecting what he has already done. But to your point, James, it really depends on what happens in the Senate. In fact, President Biden himself has already said if Republicans take control of both the House and the Senate, it is going to be a, quote, horrible two years. Well, look, it was a great night for Republicans. Elon Musk brought us home with his tweet to vote Republican, and his influence will grow as all the babies he fathered with his employees start reaching voting age. Mm. Now, let's focus in on the battle for the Senate. All eyes were on Pennsylvania, where Democratic candidate and guy who's 23 and me came back mostly henchman, John Fetterman, defeated Republican candidate giving quacks a bad name, Dr. Mehmet Oz. Dr. Oz possibly hurt by voters who bought his Insta Sleep Supermax, sleep, ultra melatonin supplements, and slept through the election. That result, along with voter repudiation of MAGA Republicans, has Trump issuing a mea culpa, if that was Latin for Melania culpable. Maggie Haberman tweets, Trump is indeed furious this morning, particularly about Mehmet Oz, and is blaming everyone who advised him to back Oz, including his wife, describing it as not her best decision, according to people close to him. Now, Weejik, are Republicans learning that there just might be a political cost to nominating amoral freaks? Republicans have felt very confident about where they were going in these midterms uh, for quite a while now, and that's because they've really attacked the one thing that is on everybody's minds, regardless of whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, and that is the economy and inflation. Of course, this administration has really tried to point out that they are facing um, you know, global headwinds, that this is a historic pandemic that they're trying to recover from, and that the president's policies will make things better because, um, you know, a lot of the measures have yet to kick in. I'm sorry, but I maintain that the number one thing voters ask themselves before pulling that lever is, do I trust this person to savagely attack Joe Biden and his family? Honestly, I don't have a damn clue what's going on if a total dreamboat sex idol like Tim Ryan can't pull up a resounding victory. For more on that dramatic Georgia Senate race, let's go to James Smartwood Jr., who is at the Herschel Walker for Senate headquarters. 
Junior Herschel Walker fell short on election night. Will he change course for the runoff election? The Herschel Walker campaign has been shocked as the number of embarrassing headlines increased. So too did support for the Republican story of redemption. So they are taking that strategy and running with it. How so, Junior? Walker is considering a number of scandals to go public with, including up until yesterday, he believed his name was Herman. He once told a reporter that when his football team took a timeout during games, that time actually froze. And whenever someone says the word head, he immediately says, oh, right, that thing you hold a gun to. Wow, we will definitely want to follow up on that. Thank you, Junior. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's turn now to the battle for the House of Representatives. America will witness a rare battering ram-free influx of Trump supporters to the Capitol building this January. Now, Ouija, what will Republicans do with House control besides install an IMAX screen in the chamber for broadcasting Hunter Biden's nudes? Well, they've already promised a flurry of investigations, including one into Hunter Biden and his business dealings and everything from um, the origins of the pandemic and how Dr. Fauci, they claim, played a role in uh, making decisions about funding and uh, the withdrawal in Afghanistan. And so um, they have already said that they plan to investigate and even try to impeach President Biden. No word yet on how quickly the Capitol metal detector will be reprogrammed to instead detect traces of Jewish heritage. Now for more, let's throw it over to Ted Jaworski at the big board. Ted, what explains these results? Thanks, James. Let's take a look at what's happening in this bellwether county in Virginia, which really encapsulates the election results across the country. Oh, man, I love this wonky, dorky loser stuff. Me too. It's just so charming to see how excited he gets about math. It's clearly his whole life. Uh, it, it's actually not my whole life. I, I just do it because it's the only way to understand what's actually happening. Uh, Otherwise, it's just overpaid analysts talking completely unmoored from anything real. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Look at him defending math. Yeah, math is like... Oh, my hero. Oh, maybe I should do what you all do. Uh, I have zero evidence to back this up, but I think voters wanted to hear a stronger message from Democrats on crime. You know what I bet would make you feel better, Ted? Telling us what's happening on the big board. Big board! Big board! Big board! Big Sorry. We'll be checking in with Ted at the big board throughout the night. I'll be here.